Hey, and welcome to Moustache Fire. I'm Bruno. That's Tripoli, the cutest puppy dog I know, my co-pilot, and also my build assistant. We're out here building a 750 Super Stall. If you are clicking on this video, chances are you might be here because you did some Google searching, Facebook searching, because you're having a couple issues building your slats or flapperons. If you saw the flapperon video, go go thank you and if you haven't go and check that out it's going to help you out there are some parts on there just like the slat build here that we need to get uh addressed and make sure people know how to fix that with that with that being said let's go ahead and knock a few things out of the way if you're here and you're zenith owner and you're you're building let's go ahead and break out our exploited view on our big manual here go to 75 sierra x-ray one now what you're gonna go ahead and do is go up here, you see where all the uh, parts are. So you have your inboard and outboard. Outboard is going to be the bigger one. Inboard will always be the smaller one on this. Now, you're gonna find this part down here, 75 S1-6 alpha. That is a doubler. That doubler needs to be changed. From 75 S1-6, you need to add an A to it. The parts that come in this, the new kit are labeled Alpha and Bravo. Alpha will be your inboard, Bravo will be your outboard. Now, there are also some other parts you need to address. It's going to be the slat support, this guy right here. Now, if this doesn't show up on camera, I'll put it, put it up there. It is 75 S1-4 TAC-1, you're going to have eight of them. This is actually what the part looks like. It doesn't look like that hexagon that's on the screen right here. The reason being is this is a superseded part and updated to help make it easier to build and make it stronger. Zenith is doing a great job about coming out with uh, making things easier and making sure that these kits are becoming final drill size that are matched. And that is amazing. So these small errors like this in your uh, drawing and on the photo guide and even on the the home built help videos it it's just you're catching it at a rough time and overlapping which is why this video is coming to you today i want to help as much as i can for this overlap period until the the drawings come out or home built help gets someone to to come out and do a full uh build video like they do great guy go over there and check out home built help um purchase the dvds it'll be the best thing you ever did now there's also another part, 75S1-1SS. You're probably looking through the photos uh, build guide from the Xenith resource page, or you're looking at the DVD from Home Built Help. Now, they're still accurate on the way to build this slat, but some of the part numbers have changed, like I said. This one particularly. Now, this slat rib, used to be 75 S1-1. It hasn't changed, but there used to be an additional uh, four, I believe, SS. Those don't exist anymore. The cool thing about match drilling and final drilling size with these is they were able to make them all the same now. Uh, with that being said, 75 S1-1 will be the only ones that you have. You, you will get, uh, I believe, 12 of these, six for each side. Uh, there will be uh, left and right. You're going to probably look at your photo guide and go, well, what the heck? Well, here's what's gonna go on. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this since there's no video and no really material out there. So bear with me, I'm gonna cut the, the camera and we're gonna start from uh, identifying our parts to getting into the build. So with that, here we go. So we have all our part list done that we know that have changed, superseded parts and the updates. Now, we need to determine our inboard and outboard slats, uh, skins, and our doublers. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you're going to want to go ahead and make your plans updated at the same time. It just makes things so much simpler. 75S1-6 alpha is going to be your inboard doubler. And the reason I say this is because you're going to notice these tags, one is alpha, one is bravo. Don't get them mixed up. And it's super hard to to not do. Well, I mean, it is kind of hard to, to really mess it up. But with that being said, these are the exact same length for um, both sets, but one is alpha, one is bravo. There will be two alpha, two bravo. The alphas are easily identifiable for inboard because of those guys right there. 
These four holes are extremely close together, two on each side. The outboard doublers do not have that. They will look like this. They will, they will be further apart, uh, about, about an inch and a half, two inches versus roughly three quarters of an inch to an inch. Um, that's very big. Can your other issue is going to be to properly identify which is inboard, which is outboard when it comes to your metal skins. This is actually super easy to do. And I'm gonna show you quickly how to do that. The, the inboard one will be smaller than the outboard one. I mean, smaller in height. The outboard one will be around 192 millimeters. The inboard one will be around 160 or 120, yeah, 160 millimeters. Also, there'll be this cutout here. And you're probably looking at that on your kit and like, what the heck? Well, this actually helps us identify which side is right side, left side, passenger and pilot. Now, why does that matter? Well, this cutout makes it easier for us to slide this into the outboard skin and uh, our slat build will be complete when we do that. We can mount it to the wing. Now, if I have this sucker with the flange down and I know that that cutout side is on my left side, then I already know that this is my inboard pilot skin. It's that simple. The other thing is the outboard skins right now are coming with tags on them already. Um, it's, it's really nice. Can't say that enough about Zenith. Their their tags and their their everything that they have going on. That little white tag right there, 75S1-3 outboard slat skin, uh, is amazing. It makes things a lot easier for us builders. Now, there's also another way if you think that you might have it wrong. Uh, once you figure out that this is your inboard one you're going to try to figure out which is your outboard, passenger, left, or right. So what you're going to notice, what you're going to notice on the outboard one specifically is that there is a mating rivet line. Now, how do I tell which side is the tip side and which side is the mating side? Mating meaning it's going to be the one that mates up to the inboard side. Well, as you can see, we have a rivet line here. About six to eight inches from that, is another set of rivets. When you're looking at your outboard skins, this, if, if you are looking at the six to eight inches, identifies that this is the mating side. So I know with the, the slam side down, which is how it will go out like that, that this must be uh, the pilot side, left side, outboard skin. Now, how do I determine that that's correct? Maybe I'm, I'm kind of worried that my parts aren't matching or something's not correct. Well, it's super easy. You can actually take these, these guys here, you see these holes right here. That is actually for that bracket we were talking about. This guy here uh, goes through there so that you can pick up these holes on the other side. Now, how do I determine that this is correct? I can actually just line those holes up with the other side, just like that. And all of the holes will line up. It's that simple. It's that simple. But if, you get, if you get this flipped and you try to do it in reverse, you will not be able to see anything through the holes. There will actually be metal there. Zenith has done a great job at making it super simple to identify parts by doing that and i thank them for that so with that being said i'm gonna take a quick magic camera break and we're gonna go ahead and start building our slats uh, i appreciate you watching this hopefully this might help some of you if you don't want to stick around hopefully at least you got the, the the part side out of it and you you've got you've got that where you know you can take care of everything you need to and i appreciate you stopping by please hit like subscribe and help a brother out uh, I need to get to 100 subs. That would be awesome if you were my uh, 100th or even just 
uh, one before the 100th. I appreciate every sub, like, uh, and comment that's in below. If you have a question or if you have something going on uh, with your build, feel free to uh, put it in the bottom of the comment section. So I try to respond to every comment that is made. Um, I appreciate you and I appreciate your viewership. With that, let's take a quick break and I'm gonna get to building these with you. All right, so we've got all our parts laid out. We're ready to go. Start by getting our inboard slat on our passenger side. It'll be the right side, easiest way to identify again with those two lines right here and the two holes. You're gonna go ahead and grab one of each of your doublers. So you're gonna grab um, part number 75S1-6 alpha, which will be the one that goes to the inboard. One here, like this. And then you're going to grab a Bravo for the outboard. Just set this aside inside your uh, right passenger side outboard slat. Now, we're going to go ahead and click on this fully. If you're watching the, the Home Built Help videos or some of the looking through the photo guides, you don't have to drill these. These are already done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, and I'll be right back. All right. So now that we've got that done and click code into place, you're going to want to grab your L angle. You should have got a handful of these in your kit when it came from anywhere from eight to 10. Mine came with 10 in 2019. That might change because I believe some of these parts are going to be uh, start to be made match drilled and final size to where you don't actually have to use the L angle anymore. And that's awesome. But for now, we're going to grab this. You're going to grab one of them. You're going to measure down 120 and you're going to cut. Now you're going to do that four times. Uh, you're going to need to, to do that so that we can make a bracket like this. So you've cut your 120 like this because we're going to need to make a bracket like this right here. So on two of them, go ahead and take two of them out. You're going to draw over from the right side with flan the flange at an L facing you. Over to the left, 50, drill hole. Another 35, drill a hole, and you're done. Now, if you're wanting to do it another way, you can do it measuring from right to left, 50 and 85. That's how I did. It just makes it that much easier. And then when you get that done and these drilled out, you're going to need to cut two slots in them, removing a piece of metal. The reason being is we're going to take our, our part number 75 S1-1, this sucker here, and we're gonna put this up against it and we're going to bend bend this piece of metal to match this curve line. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's uh, flush with this and flush with the top. Uh, when, you get that, when you get that bent and where you want it, the easiest thing to do is to clamp it in, in place. And then when you clamp it in place and you have everything how you want, you'll go ahead and drill the four holes here. I had to drill a fifth hole. Uh, and that is what you do. It's super simple. When you get that done, it's gonna look a little something like this. Now, you're going to find this part number here, which is the one we were talking about, 75S1 TAC 4. This is the one that is on the Home Built Help video. Uh, it is a Pentagon hexagon looking. The photo guides, that's, those are not correct. You're gonna wanna find this one, the one that we know supersedes your going to put that in the middle between what you just drilled and then you will click it in place like I have here and you will get something that looks like this. You're going to do this two times, both the same. When we're working on this flange or working on the slat, this flange is always going to be facing to the right if we're, if we're working on the right inboard side. And the reason being is because when you line this up and you throw this in here like that, and we click everything in place, that flange that, that has no drill marks in it will set against a side that has no drill points. Now it's gonna be different when you're down here on this side and you put it in like that, because you are going to wind up drilling some holes, but it's going to be when you make this, uh, make this all together and click it. I'll just come back and drill the holes out. It's really not that hard. Now, the middle, the middle one is the same way. You just won't have that bracket. You'll still have the flange facing on your right side and you'll have it there, just like that. And then we'll click everything together 
get it uh, riveted and I'll show you how it does it. It's really not that hard. I'm gonna do some corrosion control as well. I'm gonna do that uh, on the video that is up here. You have your slat supports done, 75S1-1, superseding part 75S1-1SS, meaning slat support, that no longer exists. Uh, remember, that's what you're gonna find in the photo guides and the home-built help, but everything else is completely correct. Remember, we have our other part, 75S1-4, in the middle between our L-bracket and our uh, slat rib. Now, the easiest way to remember this and to do this Again, we have our inboard passenger side slat metal piece. We have a small cutout here so it can slide into our outboard piece. We have the two rivet lines on the end knowing that that's going to go against the fuselage and be picked up there. Now, the easiest way to do this is to stand this guy up like this. You can do it on the ground. It will make it a lot easier, but when I do the bottom, I generally keep it on the table. Now, our L bracket that we put on, this piece here that you cut and trimmed and riveted on, will be on the left side or facing up if you have it the way I have it situated here with the uh, cutout on the very bottom. Our flange side of our slat will always be on the right or facing down if you have it this way. All right, like I said, the easiest way to do this is going to be to put it on the ground. Now we have our flange on the right side, our L bracket facing up or on the left side. You're going to slide it into the hole with your uh, nose at the very corner. This is the large side. So when we wrap this over, we can Clico. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is put this in place and you're going to want to center it and then also clamp it in place. The reason being is we're actually going to have to drill some holes here uh, to make sure that this stays in place. I had, you have to do it on both sides. Unfortunately, it's just, just how it works sometimes. I, at least I had to do it to that one down there. And the reason being is the holes will line up, but these are smaller. These are not 30s. Uh, these are the smaller ones. So you can use your silver Clicos to hold these in place, or you can go ahead and drill these out now if you, if you want, but I like to put it on it, put it in place and Clico with my silvers, then drill and make sure I have everything completely correct. Now I'm not gonna bore you with doing all of this. It's super simple. We'll put that together, like I said, if this is your first time here, I appreciate you stopping by. I'm Bruno with Moustache Flyer. Tripoli is inside taking a nap. Hit that like, subscribe button, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. And here's what the slats look like done. Thank you.